Hi and welcome back. In this section we will take a look at creating advanced components. So there are a couple of things we will learn in this section. First we will learn how to pass properties to a component. Next we will learn how to handle data outside a view component. After this we will learn how to create reusable components. Followed by learning how to use slots to pass data. Last but not least we will also learn how to split a view component into smaller pieces. So we start by learning how to pass properties to a custom view component. What will we cover in this video? First we will learn how to pass properties to a view component. Next we will learn how to use the object props syntax. After this we will learn how to use the props property as an array syntax. Last but not least we will learn about the amount of different property types. So I've created a bootstrap application and it's not really very interesting. The important stuff is happening behind the scenes. When we type in the text field, we will send a variable as a property to our custom component. Now let's dive into the code and see what's happening. Open your editor and navigate to the added view file. Scroll down to the card body and you will notice a text field which is bound to the MyString property. Below the form we are showing the my component custom component and this time we are sending this component some information called properties. Now let's scroll down to the components property at the view instance right here and you will notice a new property at the my component component called props. Here you can specify what data the component can receive. So you will notice that my boolean is a boolean and is required. My array is an array, isn't required and has a default value, which is an array with the default option. My string is a string and is also required. My number is a number and is not required. My object is an object, is not required and has a default value. Notice that you can also specify a method that will simply return a value. In this instance we are returning an object with my property set to true. Now let's play with the properties a bit. Scroll to where we reference the my component component and let's take a look at the my boolean prop. As you can see we only specify the name and not the value. When you do this, this will always result to true. You can set it to false by using so add a colon to the my boolean property and specify false as a value. Now let's see and now it's false, set it to true and we're back to true. All right. The my array, my number and my object speak for themselves. However, the my string is bound to the my string variable which is bound to the text field. When we type in the text field, notice that the prop is updated as well. As you can see right here. But what happens when we do something wrong? Let's change the number three to the text, like so. As you can see, my number is now set to three. And let's inspect, let's go to the console and you will find an error saying type check field for prop my number, expected number got string. And what will happen when we remove the my boolean property, which is required, which is specified right here. Let's do this, let's remove this. Oh, and by the way, let's take this back to three, save it. And you will get another error saying missing required my boolean. It's pretty cool, right? View shows information when something is going wrong with the properties. And another thing to keep in mind is the use for colons. Let's for instance, remove the colon from my number and see what will happen. The my boolean, proper quick, save it. And we get the same error as before. If at a prop, type check field for prop my number, expected number, got string. When you want to send a literal string to a property, you don't need to add the colon. But if you want to set primitives like a boolean number object array, or if you want to send a variable, you need to add a colon. So instead of sending the integer 3, we are sending the string 3. And we can show this by sending the string. Here we go. So this is working because we want a string, which is correct. Also can send a three. And yeah, here we go, we got another error. Expected string got number because we are sending the 
and the string, the number three instead of the string three. Cool. And another thing to keep in mind is that, as you may have noticed, that we define a property camel case, but we send data to a hyphen case property. And that's because in most cases, the template is case insensitive, just like at the view components. Now let's finish the video by debugging my components using the view dev tools. So open the inspect elements, go to view and select my component. All right. And as you can see, you will find a new prop space where you can find the properties that are available on the selected view component. And if I start typing, you will see that my string will update as well. And when you hover over the various properties, you'll get a little bit of information. You will see that my Boolean is required. It's type Boolean, number is type number, required false, etc. And that's it for this video. So now that we've learned how to pass data from parent to a child component using properties, 